So welcome everybody. Today we're going to do a quick review of GitHub Copilot. I have two extensions in installed. One is the Copilot extension. The other is the Copilot chat extension. So this is the Copilot extension. This you need, you'll need to connect it to your GitHub account. And then there's the Copilot chat extension. This is a second extension that allows you to actually open a chat window. And this one's really powerful. And this is the one that I get the most value out of. Basically, mine is set up using all the defaults. I haven't changed a thing. Okay. So one of the things that Copilot has is this, the what they call the sparkle command. So if you're looking for some sort of a, a VS code setting, save on format, you know, I save on format or something or format on save or whatever, you have this option that will appear that says ask GitHub Copilot. Okay. So when you click that, it then does its thing and it says, it seems like you want to save on save the current file in Visual Studio Code. You can do this by Control S if you're on Windows, or Command S if you're on Mac. Okay, and it has additional additional things. So then this down here, you see that the the sparkle they call this the sparkle icon. You will begin to see that once you installed in many different places. This is the Saraswati project, and this is the custom Google Drive loader. This is a hodgepodge of GitHub Copilot going absolutely nuts and, and spitting out all kinds of code, right? Things that I don't even understand, okay? But that's all right, because one of the great things about this tool is if you open up the chat window here, with this line selected, I can do explain. Don't have to type anything else. So it's looking at this line, and in theory, it's going to give me an explanation of what it does and what it is, including examples. And you can see down here the um, the sparkle icon again. That's a follow-up question. It's really remarkable. Could you please show you an example of explain on like a, an API call with, where the documentation isn't necessarily like built into the library or like sure. something like that? Sure. So, Jerome, what do you exactly want to know, for example? What are the parameters? Uh, yeah. So, like, for example, the, doc the, the example that she gave in the video was a call to the database where it added various extra flags to the call, right? The API uh -huh. call. And she was saying that these are examples from an old version of the documentation. I'm right. wondering how well, and your solution to it, um, adding random extra flags and things is to say it can actually help explain these things to you and i, I want to see like how well it works when it's given um like an api call where the documentation isn't necessarily like going to be indexed or it might be indexed but maybe not the most recent version do you know what i mean like if you've made a call to google slides api which you mm. seem to have somewhere here that's, um, that, that's right here that's this yeah. So, for example, can um, if you ask it, like, what does the the source mean in the Google Slides API result? Something like that, like something really specific. That's like you can you can just ask it questions. For example, no. Let's say so. You want to know what does the source attribute mean? Where does it come from? What does it represent, for example, right? Yeah, something like that. Maybe it's, maybe it's just my curiosity. I need to go up and do my, I'm just a... Uh... Right. So it's looking at, the thing is, it's looking at what I've selected right here. So if I just, if I come in here like this and I just select, say, you know, this, this bit here, above question using the selected code. This is exactly correct, by the way. This is 100% accurate. <laughs> I'll argue with that then, can you? <laughs> Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. This is a specific Python construct, and you can see down here it's, it ends with yield, right? That is used 
quite a bit by and it's an advanced programming uh python programming language feature that is very low memory use and should be used whenever possible so it looks like a loop right but it's actually it's a memory uh low memory use loop it's a generator function that's what it is yeah so exactly correct. It's a generator function. It's done using the yield keyword. It's iterating over the list of files, returning the most recent. It's incredible. Yep. The advantage of generator is that it doesn't need to compute all values up front, which can be very useful for large data sets, which is one of the reasons Python is so is used so heavily in uh, data science. This is the, let me show you some of the some really cool things that this can do. All right. Watch this. We'll just we'll just write out it. So when we're you know when we're developing new products, focus really isn't on getting the code right. The focus is on getting it working and the tests passing. Then we'll go back and we'll look at how we can refactor to improve the quality, the maintainability of the code. So, <laughs> as you can see, we've got some work to do. <laughs> Right? List all the code smells. Look, we got quite a few. We have nine code smells here. Let's do this. I want to give you another demo that, that has a very interesting approach. And over here, what you can do is you can open the chat window right here, for example. So you could say, and you can do the same thing. I don't know. Wait, wait. Fix the lack of type hints in this file. And the difference is it's the UI that changes. And it, I think it's easier to work with when you do when you do it this way. Okay. Now this looks really awful. Okay. And it basically just it it's not a very elegant approach. And on a tiny screen like this, it's really annoying, right? So here's what I do. I go like this. There's this option here, discard to new file. Okay, because I don't want to accept these changes without reviewing them. I want to see what the hell it's actually doing. So if you create a new file, that's pretty cool. It opens it up like this, and you can begin to, sorry, you can go through and you can analyze what the changes consist of. So it's starting about right here. I'm sorry, this isn't a great approach, as you can see, because it does things, you know, when you create a new file, it's not including all of the context. So Python starts complaining about indentation and things like that. But you can begin to go through and see where the missing type hints are. So let's look at, oh, I'm sorry. The first thing that it did was it included list and dictionary to our typing, our call for the typing library. Okay, well, that's cool. So it did definitely add some. So the first one here is this custom Google Drive loader. Let's give it a little more space. And you can see this line right here, it's added string a dictionary with a string or any subtype. TypeScript people will recognize this um, annotation immediately. So then I think it may have added some to, yeah, see there's a Boolean. I don't, yeah, recursive equals false. It added the Boolean type right there. So this is one approach you can use for adding, um, for going through and fixing stuff that's broken. What's the shortcut for this chat window? Uh, command I. So oh, okay. information, you can think of it that way. And we're doing the same sort of thing. And so it's going through and it's finding all of the instances of multiple responsibilities and it's gonna try to ferret them out into separate classes with varying degrees of success and failure, mind you. This is not, this is, this is an, you know, mega advanced sort of behavior and to expect it to just get it right from the, you know, from the get-go is, you know, come on, really? So interesting what it did here. It's hard to say exactly what it's done. I don't really know what it's done here. It's odd that it removed the comment. <laughs> but it's doing super in the init. Yeah, I am too though. So I don't know if any of you see what it's done, let me know. Well, it's got a load method, but that was there anyway. 
Ah, no, no, no. The Lord and the uh, initialized service as well, it's new, no? And the load credentials. Ah, no, the load credentials, no. I don't know what it's done. Well, yeah, no, initialized service. That's a new one. It's done that. That's nice. That's helpful. It's one that I had in mind, but I just haven't had time to get to. Um, this load, there's the base class has its own load function and it's overriding it for some reason. I'm not really sure why. Uh, I guess because it's doing the initialization here. Okay. Let's just let it go. Yellow. <laughs> <laughs> it got confused. It doesn't know what it should do. Ah, oh, there we go. Oh. Like Toma. Okay. And then look, also, by the way, when sometimes you'll get multiple completion recommendations or suggestions. And if you roll, if you mouse over, you can go, you can navigate through them, right? So this is really interesting. I just said yes to all of this. Google Doc Loader, not a great name, you know, but you can modify that sort of thing by by clarifying up here in your comment what exactly you're looking for. But you can you can see I'm not going to go too much further into this because this is like this this is a rabbit hole of uh, huge dimensions. You can just spend hours and hours experimenting with this stuff. And you do have to be a bit careful because it will introduce errors. It will introduce. It will makes. It will hallucinate a little bit. Um, it's not a hundred percent going to fix everything and do things correctly. Fixing problems, generating commit messages. Right. So this bit's kind of lame. Okay, but it can work. I don't really have any good examples, but let me just give you this one example. Okay. So like, if I come up here. And, and I want to commit this one file that I've staged. You'll see I have the sparkle icon. If I click that, it's going to generate the commit message. Really lame. Sorry, Copilot. On that one, no, that's a fail. Sorry about that. Because uh, it's like, duh, of course I'm adding it. But what's the feature that I'm, that I'm modifying? So in my notes file here, I have, I've added some data on some test runs that I created. Okay, and if I select that, and then I come up here and I do the same, fix bug. <laughs> There's no bug. <laughs> I don't even know where it came up with that. That's why I said, lower your expectations. It's going to get things wrong. I don't usually use the terminal in VS Code, but this one feature may convince me to start using it. Okay. So let's say I'm trying to do something, and I, I execute the command WTF. It goes, hey. WTF isn't found, but look, there's my little icon. So if I click that, explain using Copilot. You too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, cool. Thank you for letting me know. Let's we could try <laughs> brew install WTF util. I have no idea what that's good. What if you do? <laughs> Who knows if that's even a real package? That could just be a complete hallucination. All right. And with that, so awesome. really you know, good stuff. Cool. Thank you all for listening. I appreciate it. I hope we got something interesting out of this.